Hey, everybody, this is Jim. We're here with Rethink Podcast, and today we have a really special guest that is going to be new to a few of you, but for most of you, you're going to go like, no way. Uh, we have the infamous Scott Nickel uh, uh, from Lexington, Kentucky, but we still claim him out here in Colorado as our own. Um, welcome, Scott. What's up, man? How yeah, are you? It's good. It's like, so you're, you're missing, I can see through your window there that it looks like spring, like summer. Yeah, so man. So th- Thursday, it was 90 here. And then we got six inches of snow on Friday. But it did actually you, snow below the foothills, like down in down in Lafayette and everywhere. Oh yeah, like I live in Erie, and my branches are breaking off. And then they got there was a men's retreat up at Como. Yeah, they got three feet. So do you miss it? No. When we moved out there, somebody told me once. They said, you know, it it's not uncommon for it to snow on Father's Day every 10 years or so. And I told whoever that was, if that happens, I will move immediately. Mm-hmm. And that never happened while I was there, but it came real close a few times. So when I saw yeah. that you guys were getting that weather, I was like, gosh, I don't miss that part at all. They told me all I needed is a windbreaker in the wintertime uh-huh. here. Yeah, yeah, they told me and you the same thing. Like, you can wear flip-flops in January. He's like, well, yeah, that's true. Like, twice. Like, twice in January that'll happen. But the other the other 29 yeah. days are going to be yeah. dark and cold. They are. They're horrible. And you won't be able to feel your toes either. Right. After that. So, right. no, we just had a, a friend of mine. You, you know, Josh Josh and Tony Haddock, uh, yeah. elder here. Uh, they just went back for Derby. And uh, oh. th- as they were talking, I had dinner with him the other night, and they were talking about it. it made me kind of miss my old Kentucky home. So, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so Come good. On back I mean, there's nothing the prettier. What's there's that? Prettier than Kentucky in the spring. No, man. I mean, we've got we've got foals all over the place. Horses are running around right now, and everything's blooming. People's allergies are killing them, and you know they all yeah. think it's COVID. But you know, yeah. Yeah. It's hey, so I just wanted like uh, again, you're new to a few people out here, yeah. and uh, but you're very very familiar in your family to a lot of us out here. And every time I'm around a group of guys, they're like, "Hey, have you heard from Scott?" Or uh, I, I'll get them a. Uh, uh, social media feed or something like that. And somebody reposts what, Hey, Scott taught this or Scott posted this. So we're staying pretty connected to you, but, um, I just seems like the only time you make it out here in the last few years was for like tragedy, like a funeral or something. Yeah. I'm really hoping to end that streak, man. Well, July 10th, you're going to come out and teach for flat irons. Uh, and, uh, it'll be right at the end of my break. So I, I'll be here for it. And, and, uh, when I get the word out, or I guess I'm now putting out the word, uh, There'll be a lot of people going to be excited to see, to see you're going to be, are you gonna be able to bring the family or is it just gonna be an in and out trip? No, I think I'll be able to bring some of the family, maybe not all the family. I know Silas, my th- then will be 13 year old. He's going to be on a trip uh, around the same time. So, but yeah, wow. some of us older. will be out there. All right, good. Hey, let's, let's talk about that because when, when you were out here with us, with, with me, I mean, we, I thought our partnership was so great because one is we care about a lot of the same things. Uh, mm-hmm. obviously the word of God, we care about lost and broken people, but you and I both have, I don't know, a, a tender spot or a, uh, not, I don't want to say a soft spot because, because it's like for men, <laughs> this is sense weird. I have a tender oh, spot for men. Right. Wait, wait, no, no, I don't, no, I don't. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I mean, we have a heart for, especially men who are trying to figure it out or yeah. trying broken men who are trying to put it back together. And so I, I just have a couple questions for you around, around some of that areas of life. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like, like. In the last, you know, how long have you been going now? Six years? No, it'll be five in um, five. Labor Day, I guess. Five, but I know that whatever God was doing with us together out here, you you keep on, you have to run with it because it's your heart. Like, yeah. I, I just want to know a couple of questions. Like, what what has God been teaching you in some of those areas of life? Um, as as, as a man, you know, and as a father, and as a husband, because your kids are growing up, and then that affects your marriage, and then you're a leader in a great church, and you're trying to figure some stuff out, and then you're working with a lot of men. Yeah. So I, I just kind of want to listen, like what, 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 is, what have you been learning? What have you been noticing? What's God been teaching you when it comes to what men are dealing with? And uh, what, what are you seeing out there in, in your own life, but also in some of the men that you're ministering to? Ready? Go. Yeah, yeah man. And, I mean, I'll start with me. You know, when I was out in Colorado, we moved out there with two babies. You know, Landry and Eli were literally babies. I mean, they were toddling around. Not Eli wasn't even walking. And then proceeded to have a couple more while we were out there. And so a significant amount of my time while we were out there was with little kids, 
not sleeping, you know, I'm just grinding it out. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm becoming an old man. I tell war stories all the time. Yeah. You know, so all the time, you know, I'm saying things like we had an add a service here recently. So, you know, we're doing three on Sunday morning, one on Sunday night. And I'm like, eh, we did six, <laughs> we did two right. Saturday night, three Sunday morning, one Sunday night, you know, for years and years and in years. In a covered wagon with no that's, heat. With no that's shit. right. You know, and we had to walk and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I did all that with, with babies that were keeping me up all night, you know, and I'd mm -hmm. get home and my wife would be exhausted because I'd been gone for 48 hours, you know, that kind uh -huh. of thing. So, um, the, we'll never do that again, by the way. No. And yeah, exactly. No more Saturday nights ever yeah. It's in the Bible. It says so. Um, so, so, but now, you know, I've got three teenagers in my house and an eight year old mm. and Allie and I, we say all the time, like I crawled into bed the other night after having a talk with the teenager in the middle of the night and just said, you know, there's different kinds of tired and this mm. kind of tired is very different than when they're 18 months old and they just won't let you sleep. Yeah. That's just physically draining. This is emotionally, spiritually, you know, every level draining. Mm. Um, and so just being in that season and I've, I have great kids. I mean, they're awesome, but I also live with them and they have to live with me, you know? So, and you know how this works. Like I had a couple men pull me aside recently and just say, Hey man, you have, you have great kids. They, they had conversations with all of my kids at different points during a, a graduation party. And they're like, man, they just know how to talk to adults. They're mature, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Really? Is that true? Like, do you see that? <laughs> it's like, whew, good. Because, you know, on certain Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Friday, you know, days that ends in Y, you, know, you just go, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure where we're at right now. And mm. are we doing it right? You know, parent, parenting is by far the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It's the best thing, but it's also the hardest thing. So just, just learning to, um, I think the grace and truth thing that I've, you know, had here on my wrist for a long, long time mm -hmm. comes into play in parenting in a significant way as a father, you know, because that tension of knowing when do I lay down the law and when do I show grace is such an art, not a science. And so I'm That's still good. trying to figure that out yeah. um, and learning that when I show grace and when I say I'm sorry for my overreactions and, you know, that kind of thing quickly that it turns out what God says is true and right, you know, don't let the sun go down on your anger, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So learning a ton as a, as a father still, um, I have so much, um, compassion for fathers and parents in a way that, you know, I did children's ministry up until the point that I had kids and, you know, I see this happen in our school systems now where, um, teachers fall into a trap of believing that parents are the enemy. And I get why they can do that at times because there's a lot of knucklehead parents out there. Yeah. Um, but whether you youth, like youth them, pastors can do that. Well, too. youth pastors do it too. And I yeah. did it, you know, I used to I remember being a 23 year old, highly judgmental, you know, mm. um, children's pastor that had no children. <laughs> right. You know? And yeah. so if I, as a 42 year old with four kids, if I were to encounter that 23 year old judgmental children's pastor that had no children, I'd be tempted to take him out to the woodshed, you know? Yeah, right. yeah. So that's, um, that's, that's a place that I'm at right now. You know, a lot of, I spend Thursday mornings with a group of men, um, that the vibe in that room with those men feels very much like the kind of relationships I had with men at Flatirons. There's, mm -hmm. there's no room for BS. You know, we don't pull punches. It's not, it's not Sunday school answer time at all. Yeah. You know, the, these yeah. men don't have, if they're going to get up at six o'clock in the morning on a Thursday to go spend an hour together, we're going to make it count. We're going to laugh, but we're going to make it count, you know? So Good. my, my kind of vision for what I do has been really consolidated into three things. It's, uh, preach number one, and this I'm talking about as a pastor, not as a yeah, father and yeah. a husband. Now, uh, it's preach, it's 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 mentor, uh, young men and men, and then it's coach staff. Those are those are kind of my three pillars that I spend my time doing. And so, all of that was true while I was at Flatiron. Some of it was in its kind of um, infancy and immature stages, and now it's kind of I think it's it's a little bit more matured. And part of that's just because I'm older and have a few more scars on me and yeah. have been through a few more battles. So, yeah. So let me ask you about that. Cause we had a staff development day a few, few weeks ago and Brad Lominick 
a fantastic leader, used to run Catalyst. He came and, and he was talking to us and and he was talking about like balance. All right. So you just you just described three or four things that are very they demand a lot of attention. Yeah. And then you also started with you have these four kids that I mean, I mean I'm talking about marriage that demand a lot of attention and and you know the big kind of the buzzword everybody right, is boundaries. Yeah. And I don't it's like I, it, it would be so great if you could go like, okay, now I'm going to be leader pastor. And then now I'm going to go over there and be right. Husband. And then take off the hat. And then right. Hats. The and, one. and, and the thing is you have to wear all the hats all, all the time. time right. Cause how, how are you finding that balance? Cause I got a lot of young dads out there who are working killer hours mm. because they have a killer mortgage and they've got killer sports leagues they have to pay for. And like, and then their wife has their, their thing. And so everybody's going a million miles an hour. Um, how you, I think you were always better at this than me. And I assume you still are is like, um, how do you set this aside and give this attention? And how do you know, like, do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah. like when, as you're sitting for balance and going, okay, Eli's going through this, but I also have this meeting and then I've got a meeting with guys over there and then I've been asked to speak over here. And so you have all these people like, like, do you, have you figured out the magic? Like, is there a, I don't know, I'm going to say a formula, but what is like the grid that, I mean, you're, you're young, your young dad, your husband, you're a leader with a lot of demands on your time. How do you make that decision about who you have this many hours? Do you have this much awakening hours, right? How are you like, and, and again, I want you to teach us is like, how are you figuring out how, okay, that's, that has to go to the top of the list today. And this one's going to have to wait, but then, you know, how, have you figured out a way that, that you and Allie, your, your wife, Allie, have figured out, okay, this is kind of how we run our life. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a big question, but I think it's what everybody's leaning into right now. Has, do you have it figured out? Yeah. No. Well, I mean, I've learned a lot of things the hard way. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. Allie would tell you, and she said this consistently over our marriage, like one thing I've done relatively well is like manage my time. Like I'm a decent time manager. Yeah. But I've learned a lot of things the hard way at the same time. And a lot of that was based on just kind of ego and wanting to say yes to a, everything, you know, and I, I, I've told this story in so many places. I can't remember if I've told it at Flatirons at this point, but there was a season while I was out there where I said yes to so many things between it was like a spring, summer and into the fall. And <clears throat> I'd been in a couple different countries preached on weekends with you, preached at a couple other places, done some men's conferences, retreats, all this stuff. I'd say CIYs at the time mm. said yes to all this stuff, all things that I liked doing, all things I was relatively good at. And I, I distinctly remember doing a men's retreat somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Florida. It was like the bad part of Florida, you know, the parts without like, you know, ocean views. <laughs> Yeah, that's retreat. the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the swamp yeah. part in the middle. I wasn't at Disney World, which is the worst place on earth, but I was at this Amen. retreat center and it was a men's thing. And I was doing what I feel uniquely called by God to do. Like, you know, that is, you know, speak to men's hearts type thing. Yeah. And these dudes were outside of this cabin that they gave me. Uh, they were shooting skeet and yeah. they, were, they were doing these adventure races and all this stuff that I like, you know, and I laid in bed all day. I laid in bed all day and went and preached my sermon that night and then did the one the next morning and laid in bed all day. And then because I was so tired mm. and so mad that I wasn't at home with my family mm. that I just literally had no energy to give. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to do anything. And I just remember laying there going, what, who did this? Nobody made you do this. Like you yeah. said yes to this dummy. Right. Yeah. So that moment really marked me to go, it is actually possible to say yes to too many things and you Even end good up things. Like, yeah. Good, all good things. And you say you become no use to yourself and to others. And I'm sure I didn't do a great job at that retreat. I'm sure God used it, but it wasn't my <laughs> best by any stretch of the imagination, you know, because yeah. yeah. if I'm bitter and mad and angry, the chances are my preaching is not going to be at its best you know you don't you don't have a great poker face none in fact you're the somebody <laughs> just told me that yesterday i'm like i've known this for a long time thank you yeah, i know yeah. what was you know i'm ross barnett he's like yeah oh you yeah should play 
never play poker. I'm like, I never claimed to be a good poker player, but no, That's no right. doubt. So that, um, but so my new grid, like when I first came back here, I, I made a similar mistake. I said yes to too many things. I don't know what, I think it was kind of like, oh, there's a new guy in town or there's a, the new old guy in town or whatever. Can you do this? Can you do that? And I said yes to too many things. Mm. So I started running things through a filter of not only um, Allie, but my administrative assistant and some other guys around here. But now I've gotten to a point where kind of my grid is say no to almost everything. Mm. And that sounds extreme, um, but it's proven it's proven to be pretty helpful because I have this short window with these kids and it's becoming more obvious to me because I have one that's about to graduate high school in less than 48 Gosh. hours. Wow. So, and I've got one that's, you know, in the middle of a state tournament with baseball right now and I'm just soaking it up, watching him just love it. I've got another one who's in school plays and another one who's, you know, eight years old and just, just a joy to be around even when he's, you know, being terrible, but we're too tired to intervene in his life anymore. He's basically <laughs> feral, you know, the fire so, will go out. Absolutely. There'll be a time where I'll probably be able to do more weddings, you know, but right now, unless I really know you and love you, you know, I'm probably saying no to doing your wedding mm -hmm. because they take a Friday and a Saturday. And if I'm preaching on Sunday and Eli's playing football on Sunday, or I mean, on Friday, I'm going to be mad in July that I said yes to that wedding in February. You know, yeah. it sounded like a good idea at the time. And then you get there and you go, it! why did I say yes to that? So I've yeah, never I, regretted I, saying no. I've many times regretted saying yes. I, that's good, man. So I should write that down. I, I remember a lot of your messages out here, but one that was really, really like memorable to me is you had that jar of marbles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you remember that? And like, every, I don't know if it was every day or every week or whatever it is. It, each one of those weeks or marbles represented some span of time with one of your kids. Mm -hmm. And instead of putting them in, you, you, you took them out because mm -hmm. when they're gone, they're off of college or they're married or something like that. And like, yeah. that was a really like visual reminder of, um, like I'm going I'm to quote the Buddha now. Well, oh, because of <laughs> your podcast, we're on, Zen, <laughs> we're on Zencaster, we're right? On so Zencaster. no, uh, there's, I saw some, you know, I have all this weird wise people that pop up on social media. I'm like, what's the biggest mistake? Somebody asked the Buddha, what's the biggest mistake that people make? And the answer was thinking there'd always be enough time. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to give the Buddha any credit for that, yeah, yeah. but the, the, the truth is very similar things. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go with Jesus, you know, it's like, or, 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 or Solomon is the life is a mist, you know, it's like yeah, it's vapor. Bands, it's just gone. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what, that, that's just, just really, really true that, that you, cause most of us don't catch this until we're sitting at the graduation going, it's over or mm -hmm. the wedding and going, it's over or they're off to college and, and it's over. So that's, I think it, that could be life changing right there is just to go like, Hey, I gotta have a filter and say, say no to almost everything. Yeah. I, I mean, I got that illustration you're talking about from marbles from somebody at, it wasn't Andy Stanley, but it was one of the, you know, guys at North point all those years ago. Mm -hmm. And it stood out to a lot of us in youth ministry because it was something we wanted parents to see and understand and take yeah. their investment and use it. But you're so right in that it's, it's, it's one thing to know that. And when you're 27 and, you never sleep and you've got three babies. Everybody tells you like, Hey man, don't blink. And you're like, um, can I get through this as quickly as possible? <laughs> because I can't, yeah. I can't seem to catch up, but mm -hmm. they're not wrong. It's just that you don't know what you don't know, you know, until you walk through it with certain things with parenting. So you just learn some things the hard way and, and then you try to course correct. And I think that's the key. You know, the other thing is I, I, I tell young guys all the time, like, if you're young and you're married and you have kids, you can have one hobby, mm. one, and you can't, you just don't have time for three. So I get that you played golf when you were 23 and your wife didn't mind when you were gone for six hours on a Saturday. Cause you had a date night every night, like every night was, right. what do you want to do? Well, now you don't. So is golf the best hobby for this season in your life? I don't care. I don't, mm. I laid down golf for a number of reasons and haven't played in years, but so for I me, I laid it down cause I'm a Christian, right? Yeah. There you and go. I can't, you know? I can't be a Christian and play golf. They're mutually exclusive. Well, in my life. especially if you don't play very often, you know, but, <laughs> or very well, 
or very well, which is most of us. So, so I, you know, my one thing, and I tried, tried this and it just didn't work for me. Like you remember it, like you, you pulled me aside one time because I got so infatuated with CrossFit, you know, and we're like, Hey man, you used to be the guy with vision and ideas and stuff like that. And the only thing I can say about you in the past year is CrossFit, <laughs> you know, so yeah. hobbies are intoxicating for men and I should have probably looked in the mirror at my own life at that point too. (laughs) Well, (laughs) and it goes back to what I say all the time is when a good thing becomes an ultimate thing, it can become a destructive thing. So those are the things that, that concern me the most, like the chances of me, like going off the rails, you know, with black tar heroin and three hookers in a hotel room are, there's a lot of steps between here and there. (laughs) I'm not saying I couldn't get there, but there's a lot of steps. I've got enough <laughs> guardrails up to where that's probably not the most clear and present danger in my life. Yeah. What's a far more clear and present danger in my life is the very good gifts God has given me elevated to the place of God in my life and then mm. just destroying my life. And hobbies, I think, are one of those. And so I just tell young guys, like, pick one thing and then try to do it when it doesn't steal from your family too much, you know. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's just my garage door goes up and the, the barbell gets loaded, you know, and. I scream and cry and, you know, uh, try to lift heavy things in the garage really early in the morning or at my lunch break. And that's about it. The rest of the time is dedicated to ministry, being with Allie and being on ball fields and watching plays and things like that. Yeah. Well, that's how we started hanging out together. Right. Yeah. So before I even right. met you, especially like when Robin was like going through a lot of her illnesses and depression and stuff like that. And if I wanted to work out, I had to do it when it didn't take time from anybody else. And that was four or five o'clock in the morning when I lived in Louisville. And so then I just started developing that. Right. And then when I moved to Lexington, yep. I'm like, hey, and I don't know if you were a big morning person then, but you started going to Gold's Gym with me yeah. and early, early in the morning working out. And then then I started talking to Flatirons and then I blew up your world at Gold's. Yes. So I went, hey, right. can I run something by you? <laughs> that building is called Esporta Fitness now. So it's not even a Gold's Gym anymore, but it's there. Yeah. I think uh, about it every time I drive by there. Yeah, it was a it was a good a good moment. Now that's really 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 uh, that's helpful to to choose that one thing, and it's not forever. That's the thing. Like like I was at, I was at I because I, I had counseling this morning at seven at the tech center, so I had to be at the gym at four when they opened, yeah. and so I'm I'm usually there at five, and I'm walking out, and this guy I normally see his young dad, he's got a four month old uh, little girl, and he comes in, and I'm like, where you been? And he just looked at me like. Um, um, I, I, I couldn't get out of bed. And I was yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. You know, yeah. but you know, he, he was, he was there, but I re- I remember that glazed look oh. of a four month old who's teething and you get maybe two hours of sleep in a row yep. and, and you, and you think even, so I told you, I, Robin, I finally got COVID. Well, she did. I, te- I tested negative, but theoretically, uh, sure. theoretically, but like when you're sick, I remember laying in bed with a fever last Saturday morning and, and, and thinking, it's always going to be like this. <laughs> It'll never change. Cause yeah. you have a headache and you're like sitting there yeah. going, uh, this is going to be like this forever. And there's moments in not just parenting or career or marriage, yeah. the dark days where you just get this tunnel vision going, I don't, I don't know if this can be fixed. It's always going to be like this. And so then your tendency then is to run away to yeah. n- not run away look, to hobbies, to distractions, yeah. to work, right. to things right. that, like that. And so that's just a really, really great reminder is that time's limited which also means that uh, th- everything's a season, you know, mm-hmm. and and that's just that's just good, really, really, really good wisdom. Well, and a tendency I have, too, is to get you said tunnel vision, like when things become painful, I try to get through them as fast as possible. Like mm-hmm. my goal then becomes, all right, how can I put my head down and run through this and end it as quickly as possible? And that yeah, that's just that's a control feature of my life is I'm trying to control my circumstances and it, yeah. it doesn't newsflash that doesn't always work. <laughs> yeah, rarely. I, I was, I was in counseling today. Uh, Harv is my counselor and he's the guy that walked me all the way through sabbatical and walked our mm-hmm. elders through it and walked our church through it. And he's so, mm-hmm. he's so wise. And we were even talking about some of the residual effects of, of those, of those times. I mean, God has blessed it and things are so good here and so healthy here. And there's a great vision and unity and I can go on and on and on mm-hmm. and turn into love fest, but there's still every once in a while a trigger. Yeah. You know, that feels like, Oh no. Even when like when Robin's doing really, really well and then she has a bad day, I went, Oh, here we go again. 
right like going off How the long cliff will this season last yeah. yeah and then even like should i even get my hopes up it's just a matter of time right. but but one of the things we were talking about today is the kind of the mantra of, of sabbatical for me was slow is fast yeah because if, fa- if fast is fast then you have to go back and clean up so much stuff right. and th- there's certain right. things that you get to dictate the pace in and some things you don't mm-hmm. and like i'm not in charge of like I've, i have a, I have a friend that just uh really screwed up his marriage big time mm-hmm. right and and he's wired like okay let's let's claim god's grace and let's you know you know go to counseling and then let's get back to it and it's like you don't you don't get to control that for her yeah you know and you we read, sometimes what, say it again you got to sit in it sometimes oh gosh yeah yeah he brings beauty from ashes but sometimes right. the fire it's gonna burn a little while right gotta burn and, yeah yeah and uh so i great illustration we were at that conference a few weeks ago and i'm gonna preach this or you can preach it whoever preaches first will give the other one credit but um <laughs> like uh, andy stanley showed this picture of a grandpa walking hand in hand with a little kid Mm. and he said who sets the direction here and the answer is grandpa right who sets the pace the little kid (laughs) right right grandpa says we're going this way but if if grandpa walks at he's six two and he walks at his pace eventually that little kid's just going to sit down right and i think that's what we have to remember in our marriages and with our kids and stuff like that is you have vision and clarity you got things to do you got to slow down Mm -hmm. because you're you're like you're like me in some mostly the good good as a compliment i'm trying but but you also you move fast oh yeah yeah Yeah, and you don't really i have one i have stop in a hundred and you're very very similar to that and Mm -hmm. when you look over your kids like hey keep up keep up keep up or you look at your wife keep up or you look at you know men in your church and they're like i i can't go that fast right and that's there's and nothing get, wrong with that. And then if I'm not in a healthy place, I get mad or self righteous, prideful. Well, why can't you? Yeah, mom, why don't you be as tough as I am? Like mm. you may remember this. I ran in that. Um, no, this is a little bit before our time. But Allie and I, before we had kids, we ran in the half marathon in Louisville, the Derby. Now, I ran at five k with you. Yeah, we could tell that story in a minute too. But <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, Allie and I trained together and that's how I know it was before we had kids, but we trained together <laughs> and I made the mistake of switching shoes about four weeks out before the marathon. And I hurt my IT band real bad. And if you're a runner, you know what that means. It just hurts. It feels like you're being stabbed in the knee with an ice pick. And so I couldn't run much those last four weeks before the actual race. And so our plan was we had trained together. We were going to run together and we had a pace picked out and all this kind of thing. I got to run about five miles once with Monty Wilkinson at staff retreat over at Country Lake, and that didn't hurt. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. Well, we get up there to Louisville, and the, the first mile's flat, and the next back then, the next few miles were all through Iroquois Park, which is all hills. Yeah. We got to about mile two or three, and all of a sudden, the pain starts hitting my knee, like bad. And we got to go, you know, 13.1, and we're in like mile two or three. Mm-hmm. And I looked at Allie and said, I have to go. And she said, what does that mean? And I said, my knee hurts. I have to go. And I ran faster for the rest of the race and finished. I forget how far ahead of her, but I just, I just wanted it to end. <laughs> so I ran oh, wow. faster. Well, that, that sounds really tough, but I couldn't hardly walk for a while after that. Like I couldn't get in a car after that. So it's like, okay, great. You, you're a big, tough guy you push through the pain and you left your wife in the dust. Here's your medal. And also <laughs> you can't walk for two weeks, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that, that is a little bit of a microcosm. That's a funny ish story, but I can be that way in real life too, where mm. if there's too many things going on and if everything's really, really heavy, I have a tendency to go, give it all to me. I'll mm-hmm. carry it and I'll carry it fast. Everybody get on my back, but everybody's going to pay in the long run, including wow. me. So yeah. I have to pay attention to that tendency in my life. Yeah. Well, you know, when I got back from sabbatical or right before I reached out to you, I remember that you reached out to me right away, you know, yeah. uh, from a distance. And I, I couldn't receive anything at that point because, oh, yeah. sure. you know, it's like, but one of the things that, and I maybe we'll wrap up our time with this, but, um, is like, you're really super important to me. And, um, and I just, I, I love you and I appreciate you and everything you've done in my life. But I, I didn't realize that I didn't realize how important and what a great team and how much I relied on you and needed you in my life. Because to say that out loud would feel weak. 
I don't need sure. anybody. I got this, sure. right? I can I can run this 13.1. I'll gut it out. Watch, I will finish, you know. Uh, and then when you left, and I, Stefan, one of our campus pastors, wanted to point this out to me. He says, you know, when Scott left, because he was disobedient to God and left you. Uh, no, he didn't say that. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding on that, right? Uh, when he left, he said, I think he just threw the whole place on your back mm -hmm. and it crushed you. Mm -hmm. And that was the first, like, ah, I never thought about it. But I think sometimes, like, this kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier is you, you don't really realize how important some people are or how short time is until they're not there. Right. Like you yeah. just, you just lost one of the most pe important people in your life with your grandpa. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and then again, it's like my dad's birthday's coming up and I'm, I don't wish him happy birthday on Facebook 10 years later. You know, you know, some I, people mourn, boy, they, you know, but there's certain times where I go like, man, I miss him. I, I, I oh, need yeah. him in there, you know, but I think that the same thing that I did here and then, and then really God, um, God says, this is going to crush you. And I'm going to, I'm going to set you over on the sideline and get some kind of some go to what do they call it? Physical therapy for your soul, for your ministry, yeah. for your, whatever that is. And some of the events around our relationship, we're, we're part of the triggering ones of that in a good way, mm. in a good way. And so I just, you know, there's every time anybody leaves, like there's some people here, they're going to leave ministry. And then there's a, that question behind the question, behind the question. And like, while leaving is always hard and you leaving here was really, really tough. I know it was for you and it was for us and stuff there. Um, it's like all the rumors and stuff like that. I just want to make really, really clear. It's like, I love you. And I miss you. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, I, although I do have to say this, <laughs> I should never run that 5k with you because you have no, you have no soul. You have no soul, right? Well, uh, you will need, you do need to know, I, I actually did this, um, <clears throat> I did this, this like health assessment thing where they like look into your DNA and tell you all these different things. And one of the things they told me was you don't need to run. And I was like, where have you Doctor's been? Orders. Yeah. I was like, really? Man, what were you in my twenties when I was doing this stupid, you know, long distance running. So anyway, they told me not to run. They said, you just need to do strength training and you need to walk. So that's what I do. I lift weights and I walk. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to come run. see your doctor. I know that's, see. I said that to our church and they're all like, I got blown up that week. Who exactly is your doctor? Absolutely. <laughs> so, it's like, that yeah, doesn't mean but, your DNA will tell you that he may tell you, you need to go run adventure races. I don't know, but no, yeah, no. you, you decided you were going to run a marathon the year after I did. At, well, first right? of all, we ran a 5k in Lexington, right. and, but you were and we were training together and running and you kept wanting to talk. But here's why, because I had already done the marathon and then you decided you were going to do one and it was up ahead. So one of your training right. runs was let's do this 10 K together. So it was yeah. 6.2 or one or whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah. And I was still in residual good, good enough shape to run a 10 K without having to worry about it. Well, you I was just were, angry. Yeah. You were on the front end. And so kind of similar to your illustration. It's like, Hey man, you, you set the pace. However, however you want to go. And I was just trying to, keep you distracted and you said some bad words to me and, and he I failed. Was quiet. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And eventually I ran that. I, I ran the Chicago marathon a year after you did. Yeah. And I'm checking that off the list and people ask me like, Hey, you ever want to do that again? I'm like, no. hell no. no, there's no way. No. no, never, 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 never. My knees wouldn't do it anyway, but I agree. Hey, it's, 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 it's great talking to you, man. And I look forward to you coming out in July. Um, uh, Tell Eli good luck in his baseball tournament. Man, I, I can't, I can't believe Lamb is graduating this weekend. Yeah, man, graduating on Friday night. Wow. Well, tell her I was up at the cabin yesterday and I saw a snake ah, between snowstorms. Because remember she came up there. When kids are graduating, you have all these old slideshows and pictures and all that kind of thing. And so many of hers are with like lizards and snakes and oh, yeah. you know all, the, all all those things. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, li listen, man. I mean. I, to your point, we can wrap up. I know you want to wrap up, but nope. you know, I, I love you. I love flat irons. That's never changed. It's never sure. changed. And leaving there was literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. There's no yeah. question about it. And, um, I, I've been back once to preach not long after I left and I'm looking forward to coming back to preach just to, to your point, to be there for something other than a tragedy situation, right. you know, that right. kind of thing. But, you know, when I look back at, you know, our run and our time together there, I have nothing but gratitude, you know, and, and, yep. and it's really a joyful thing for me to reflect on, especially mm. now, like, you know, 
the first year or so back here, it was just a lot of sadness because it was, it felt like loss, you know, yeah. now yeah. it doesn't feel like loss to me anymore. I mean, it just, it just feels like that is, that is a part of my life that I'm still connected to. Sure. And, you know, I shared this in the funeral that I came out there for, but I really do believe what CS Lewis said and it's framed on my wall right over here. It's actually a, a postcard that, that somebody from Flatirons gave me when I left. And it's a quote from Lewis that says, there are far better things ahead than what we leave behind. Mm. And when I had that sitting in this office I'm in right now, you know, just a few months removed from having left Flatirons, that was, that was hard to believe, you know, yeah, I get it. Um, but I really do believe that that's, that's the case because, you know, we have eternity together, you know, and in right. the meantime, we got a lot of work to do, you know, and, yeah. and your work still has you in primarily Colorado and my work has me primarily in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, but we get to sit around, you know, fishing holes and banquet tables in heaven and, and yeah. swap stories. And so I'm not in a hurry like I used to be in that way. That's good. Well, we, we miss you. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing you. So tell, tell the family hi and, uh, and yeah. Um, We'll talk to Thanks, you soon. Man. Appreciate okay. you. Bye, Scott.